calling out all my nerds, freaks, and geeks. It's mob time. Don't tune in, cut the show time. Go ahead and call the gang up for the one time. Rap food rise, got them on the line. And my life's still great, I'm doing just fine. Hands up. All right, you guys. Welcome to the Blurred Mob Podcast. Today, we have a very, very special ep- episode. We will be interviewing my co host and friend, Galvin, also known as King for some reason. How you doing? Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. I specifically you call asked for you. No, I specifically asked for you for the content, but don't start with me on this interview. Just, why you do I call myself King? Why do I call yeah. myself King? Before we even I'm, get to the interview, this is a pretty well, my, question. My manager said that quite, with my hey everybody, we just my manager, my manager said that question went on the um the document that you sent us beforehand. Um, but I can go ahead and answer it. Um, why do I call myself King? Um, I don't know. It's just, it just, I just emulate a King. Like, it just give King. Like, I feel King. Like, I just, not as in I'm above everybody else. No, stop, 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 stop. But, <laughs> oh, no, that's just a, just a name that I came up with in high school and it stuck. I like the way it was spelled with the V instead of the I. And I was out like this. That, that's, that's cunt. That's, you know, what is it? That's what's uh, given. Yeah, that's what it's given. That's um, what's the word I'm looking for? Damn, it's gonna it'll come to me later. But yeah, I like the way it was spelled K B N G, and they kind of like it's stuck. So that's I, that. I feel that it looked like a typo, but I hear you though. Oh, whatever. See, that's that's you know, your jurisdiction. That's your <laughs> jurisdiction. To to everybody watching and listening, we would like to thank you for coming. We're in for a fun interview, and I hope that you all. Take the time to subscribe to the channel, like all of our videos. If you're, make sure to follow us on social media. The links are down below. I don't know yeah. them all by heart because I'm the interviewer, not soup today. <sighs> all right. So, King, how, how you joined the Blurred Mob about a year ago, coming up on two years almost? Yeah, I joined. Yeah, I joined, and I was kind of like, I won't say I was an official, but I was kind of affiliated because like my song was used as mm-hmm. an intro when she first started it. But I officially like joined as a. But first, I was like, as you know, I was like, what did y'all call it? Like staff, like background. I was like doing stuff. Yeah, in the background we, we had like you, that. And, you and Antoine tech folks. Yeah, or whatever. had me, you know, making magic behind the scenes. Then I kind of came to the forefront. Um, honestly, the reason is because the food asked me. Like, I mean, that was it. Yeah, that, I mean, when she asked me, I was like, I mean, I, yeah, I can go add my personality. But like before, it wasn't like I was like pressed, like, oh, I need to be. I mean, I just supported. From the sideline and made graphics and stuff, and you know, wore my t shirt when I was asked to, but you know, when she asked me to, you know, <laughs> become <laughs> co host number five, I was like, I could do this. I could, you know, add a little rouser down. So, y'all weren't giving nothing anyway, so I had to come on it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fire. I'm, I'm fire. <laughs> you talking about your other host. I'm fire. We ain't gonna do them like that. We love everybody on the Blood Mary podcast. We love everybody. You say that, but who's your favorite co host? Listen and be honest. Don't be trying to not hurt folks' feelings. No, listen, no, listen, no. You just you asked me who's my favorite co-host, but you the question didn't say who's my favorite co-host of the Blur My Podcast though. Who's your favorite co-host of the Blur? No, mob? that's not that's not what you said, Luigi. He said that wasn't on the thing either. What like what is this giving him like? <laughs> and I'm just Queen saying like, it. but if I had I'll to pick the whole interview, I'm gonna say I like all uh, what because everybody brings something different and I like what everybody brings to the table. I can't just pick a single person because not only will that not be fair to the other ones, but it will be a lie. Like, I just don't like, I like us as a unit. That's why, you know, when we do live streams and stuff, I was FK for everybody to be there to, you know, give their two cents and put their personality in the pot. So I know that's not the answer you was correct answers. I know that's not the answer you was looking for, but it's an answer. And yes, I was meeting the train. You know, my manager Luigi got me together before I came out here. <sighs> let me let me let me get down into the weeds <laughs> with it. Let's get into the weeds with it. So some of y'all may not know, or y'all may know, that King is an up and coming musical artist. I don't I don't want to just put him as a rapper. Because I feel like he he can expand into all genres. Yeah. So I want to I want to ask King, are you still pursuing your music career and how's it going at the moment? Any new projects on, underway? Actually, music started as a hobby. That's 
that's what music is. I'm gonna be honest, music is actually a hobby that started during COVID. You know, we was all locked in the house. And me and some of my cousins, you know, got on our phones and made a couple of freestyles on some beats. And people actually liked it. They was like, yeah, I mean, you actually, you know, you can rap a little bit. You know, if you tweak this stuff and refine it and, you know, sharpen your craft, you can actually be an artist. So I was like, okay. And it was fun, you know, just sitting down, write music or write to your favorite beats that you grew up listening to, like Wayne or Nicki or Drake. It was just, it was just mm-hmm. fun. And it was also a way for me to, like, show my, my witty side. So, you know, get on the beat and say fun, slick shit. And people don't take it serious because it's art, it's music. So, yeah. Right. So what's, what's like your process when it comes to writing music? Like, I know you've seen like that 100 gigs by Drake and we've seen mm-hmm. all these, how he gets into the mind instead of making a song. How does that go for you as a newer artist? Honestly, though, like, it starts with the instrumental for me. It starts with the beat. And if I hear a beat that I really like, then I just, the words come in my head, like, by themselves. So that's, I guess mm-hmm. that's how I start. Once I hear something that I really like, and it's weird with me, like, I can't, sometimes I can just sit down and rap because I want to, but most of the time I have to be inspired to sit down and write music. Like, if I have nothing to say, it won't come out, then it's going to be garbage. I've done it before. I've sat down and, like, forced <laughs> myself to write music. And it was like, yeah, you don't really like this because you're not inspired. You don't really have nothing to say at the moment. So I kind of like do it when I like hear a beat that I haven't heard in a long time, like an old Wayne beat. And it's like, ooh, I ain't heard that in like 10 years. Now I'm inspired to like, ooh, I want to write to this. Like, so I guess you could say that's my process. Yeah. It's kind of a little bit of nostalgia. So, yeah. Okay. And for those who don't know, he did write the intro to the Blurred Mob. My favorite part is like gravy. That's so funny. So, and speaking of that, I know I'm... <laughs> That's it gets me every time. It's funny because that's the actually the first original song that I wrote, like from both verses, the chorus, the ad libs. Like, I wrote that from scratch, and that was like, and I'm actually proud of that song because before I was just doing like little freestyles, and one day the gathering, if you really gonna let's see if you can sit down and make a full fledged song, get you a beat and make mm-hmm. a song from start to finish, and I did it, and I was I like this, I actually like this. And so when you're like doing ad libs for a song, how are you doing it? Like are you just yelling in the mic, like yeah. Actually, that's Whoa. yeah, basically, and that's <laughs> and actually that's like one of my least favorite parts about making music. Like if you go to my SoundCloud, y'all don't go to my SoundCloud. <laughs> the music on my SoundCloud, like if you listen, you can tell ad libs is one of my least favorite parts because it's like what what do you say on this ad lib? Like you just yeah, and like some songs you get into it, but other songs it's like yeah, I mean like. What the fuck do you say? So a lot of my, I ain't going to say a lot. Like, some of my songs don't got ad-libs in the background. Or it's, like, very few mm-hmm. ad-libs. Because, you know, what if, like, it just felt weird just screaming, yeah, turn up. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like it, but I actually like artists that do good ad-libs. Like, Doja Cat, Quavo, Travis Scott. Um, They do really good ad-libs. And I wish I was mm-hmm. an ad-lib artist. I wish I could do those fire-ass ad-libs. But it just, it just, they don't come natural to me. I feel that. I feel that. So I wanted to ask, only because you were talking about your music and you always mm-hmm. call Nicki Minaj one of your favorite artists, but you call yourself a a Bob, a Barb. How do I pronounce it? You're How so do I say funny. A Barb. <laughs> yeah, I got I got to get into like it. The, yeah, like the Barb Wire Fence. Yeah. Okay, the Barb Wire mm-hmm. Fence. Okay, something the like Barb that. Wire Fence. Oh, oh a fence. Oh shoot. <laughs> We up too early. <laughs> we up too early. I think Fed Sphinx or something. <laughs> I don't know what you said. See, yeah, we are up too early. Yeah, that's... Look, but explain to me, what does it mean to be a bard, and how does one become a bard? Let me just say this first, because the word, the term bard has such a negative, nasty connotation to it, it denotation content connotation is what the word it has a nasty dark connotation to it but i still call myself a bar i would say i'm an og bar i'm mm. i'm not a bar bar that just get on twitter i mean i, I get on the internet and defend the queen because you know she she's an artist and her writer she's legendary but like just on twitter all day every day with a stand account arguing with these people i'm not doing that i'm the one on spotify streaming the music like, that's what I get into. So, that's the type of bar I am. Like, I've been with her since she came on the scene in, like, 08, 09. With the black tracks, pink underneath, she done glued that shit in right before the show. Like, I was been with Nikki since she been in the streets, like, in the come up. So, 
I'll say I'm a, an OG barber, music bar. But okay. to the internet bars, we need y'all. Cause you know how the uh, kingdom has the queen and they got, I'm a part of the council. So I'm either, I'm either going to be the, the hand, the master of coins, master of whispers, the, um, grand maester. I'm on her council. I'm on Nikki's council. <laughs> Why you name it Game of Thrones? But, I'm saying, <laughs> but if we need the internet bars cause they're our army, they're our soldiers that go out there and march when they out there talking slick. So I appreciate the internet bars. I'm not one of y'all. I don't be down there. I'm not a foot soldier. My boots stay to the ground. But you know, I you know, I sit beside the queen and counsel her and listen to her music and run up the streets on the back end. So yeah, that's my version of a bar. Mm-hmm. One that likes the music and can actually separate Nikki's personal life from her work life. Because we do mm-hmm. that with every we literally do that with literally everybody in the world. Everybody else we can separate the two, but it seems with some artists like hers, they always merge the two. And I don't think that's fair, but yeah. I feel that. See, and we've been talking about a lot of your interests, so I do want to go into like a little fast round. Let's just get some of this little nerdy stuff out the way so the fans can learn a little bit about you. Okay. Um, your new anime fan, give me your top three right now. What's up? Right now, my top three right now, right now, as I'm sitting in this chair. What time is it? At 11.37? 11.38 a.m. Okay, I will tell you, I can't I like a, I like them all a lot, the ones that I watch. So I'm going to give you the ones that I'm watching now that are really interesting right now. Three of the ones that I'm watching okay. now. So I'm binging Black Clover. Um, I'm getting into that. I actually really like Black Clover. And I'm a fan of the animes that are like action-packed, but also hearty and light and funny and goofy. And Black Clover is that. It kind of reminded me of, yeah. of um, Soul Eater in a way, how it was... They got down to business, but it was still like quirky and funny on the back end. So, um, Black Clover for one. Two is Claymore. Now, Claymore really? is not an anime that's that got that funny, quirky side. Claymore is straight business, straight serious business. Ever since the first episode, like the first episode when I watched it with one of my homies, I was kind of uneasy because it was so fucking serious. I was like, this is serious, like. They give a lot. You got to change your settings and country road to watch it. Like, they give, like, an explicit, mature message. And I'm like, okay, maybe this ain't for me. But as I kept watching it, it's actually a really good story. And I'm like, okay, this is nice. So, if y'all ever ever seen that on y'all country road, be like, should I watch that? Y'all should give it a try. Now, it is one of those animes that you got to sit down and watch. Now, it's, it's going to give you some... Uh, yeah, it's going to give you a little action in the beginning, but you got to get into that plot, because that's what, that's what the, good, the goodness, the meat and potatoes is the plot. And I would probably say number three. <sighs> number three. Well, I did say the ones I'm watching right now. I ain't gonna do that. So, is it Wisteria? Wisteria? Is it Wisteria? Wisteria? Wisteria. I've heard Wisteria. of that one. I ain't watched the, it. The um, Sword and the Wand, the Wand and the Sword. That's actually a really good mm-hmm. one. Um, and it also has that serious, but also light and hearty feel to it, too. So, I actually like that one, too. So I would say, yeah, those three. Black nice, Clover, nice, Claymore, nice. and Wistoria, if I'm saying that right. Y'all don't butcher me in the comments. <laughs> They're going to butcher you for talking about Claymore. I think that's that's an anime that gets like mixed reviews. I think it, yeah, Cla- I think it went away from the manga. Clay, like, I will say, Claymore is, is an acquired taste. Mm-hmm. And some of the themes in the show, I could see people disagreeing with. It was a recent episode I watched that I was like, that's borderline. Yeah, that's y'all. Yeah. But I was like, I'm invested at this point. I don't, y'all didn't have to do that, but I'm going I'm to keep it pushing and see what y'all got going on. So I, I understand why they said they feel like that about Clay Moore. It, yeah. Yeah. If you're not okay. into like the dark, real gory, in your face type, you know, stuff, you probably won't like it. So, so King, cause I never, like, I've known you for what? Are we, are we, we have been like, what, seven years? Sophomore, sophomore year in college you got introduced? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think you were a nerd when I first met you. So when did you realize that you were a nerd? Cause I was like, nah, he seems like a cool kid. He, he wears snapbacks. (laughs) <laughs> swag down. That's crazy. Like, so you said, so you profiled me based on when you first met me. So I look like a hoodie. Back, back. That's what you, you said. You profiled me. 
You profile me. Okay, we ain't gonna we ain't gotta get into that. You exactly. right. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> you right. I'll say I'm <laughs> I've always been a nerd at heart, like growing up. I've definitely always been a music nerd. When it comes to music, I would say music is always my number one nerd category. And so he was like, You can't be no music nerd. Yes, you can. Like, you can. Mm-hmm. So I would say music would be my number one nerd category. And then I played games a lot growing up, like video games. I didn't know like how in depth I was into a game until I grew up and thought back. Like we had a you know, play PlayStation growing up, playing games like Spyro and God of War and all those other games. Hard but, went hard. Yeah. And so when I thought back, I was like, dang, yeah, you play a lot more games than you think. So I, I give myself that gamer, you know. Then in the I recently started just got into comics, but I have always like superhero type stuff. So Marvel and DC, like those shows growing up, Teen Titans, Young Justice, Batman Beyond, you know, all them good shows growing up. I was always into the superhero vibe. Um, I would say anime is my newest bag that I'm getting into. Anime is the newest one. And I'm actually enjoying my nice. anime journey, discovering, you know, different animes and, you know, stumbling upon hidden gems like Claymore. Um, yeah. And I'm still getting into it. I'm, I'm trying to get to the point where I can look at a poster and just watch it. Like, I'm at, cause you know how you yeah. look at some stuff and it's like this, it looks good, but you know, you get kind of reluctant cause you don't like just diving into new stuff. I'm trying to get to the point where I just watch it and dive into it. Because my home was telling me that's the only way you're going to find the good ones if you just start watching one. And if you don't like it by, you know, episode four or five, you know, you can pay it dust, but you're going to have to, because, you know, the synopses and the first episode just don't give you a gist of what the anime really is about. So I'm learning yeah. to do that. And I think Claymore was actually my first one where I really, like, toughed it out. Because the first you couple of episodes... Her, her armor was like, she looked fire. <laughs> yeah, and the first couple of episodes, I was like, I don't but I was like, let me see this through. This I was like, this has potential to be nice. And yeah. So yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm a I'm a piggyback off of that. You said you you were really getting into the comics, and I know that MCU, they're saying it's gonna be a mutant saga. I don't know if you heard about mm-hmm. that. But which yeah, hero slash heard, mutants yeah. do you want to see in that future saga? Honestly, I want Marvel to create some new mutants and new powers. That's what I would like to see. I would like to hmm. see a new set of mutants, new set of powers that we've never seen on the big screen before. And I feel like with the new minds that are like working in the industry now, we can come up with some good power sets. Even like the girl from Deadpool, what was her name? Domino. Her whole power being she takes yeah. people's love. And I was like, that's so interesting. Like, why can't we get like more superheroes with those type powers on the big screen? So that's what I'm looking forward to. To see like what kind of powers they set up, they sit in the jar room and come up with, they can always fall back on, you know, the main ones, you know, Storm, my favorite, Wolverine, of course, Professor X, Magneto, but, you know, I feel like it'll mean more to fans if they actually give us something new, fresh. Of course, you can have those old faces in there. You you can have Storm them in there mentoring and stuff, but the focus is on the the new version of the the new mutants that y'all have introduced to us. So, I would say that's what I would want from the MCU when it comes to X Men. I would feel that. I would like. I would love to see that. Actually, okay, yeah. okay. Now I am finna get a little, little personal. You know, you are a black brother and a member of mm-hmm. the LGBT community, Q plus community. And I wanted to ask, how do you feel about the representation that those your two communities have received in nerdy media? recently or even historically is it evolving in the way you want it to see is it going backwards how do you think about it feel about it i will say it just depends on which category i'm gonna say that um uh, mm-hmm. i guess I, it's progressing you know with the comics and you know the tv and film industry I can't really just speak on the anime industry because, again, it's not really my culture to just say, like, y'all need to put more gay folk in them animes. Like, that's <laughs> way over there in Japan. That's their own thing. I ain't even got to watch that stuff. It's what they can tell me. And I wouldn't even be mad at them because I don't got to watch y'all stuff. I can stick to America. But I would say, yeah, it's slowly but surely progressing. Uh, I'm not mad at it, but I'm not ecstatic. Like, ooh, all these gay folk, all these gay folk. So... I'm okay. Gonna, I mean, it's whatever. Still, still room for improvement. I'm. Assuming. Yeah, still room for improvement. Yeah, but we've also come a long way. I put it like that. I like that. I like that. 
And what topics do you feel like don't receive enough light in nerd culture at the moment? And you could be specific to whichever branch if you wanted to. I would say... I don't know, because I'm really in tone on my social media with, like, the anime community, the gaming. I'm in a lot of, like, gay nerd groups, so I, it was like a gay mm-hmm. gamer, G-A-Y-M-E-R, gamer group that with gay guys that play games, and it's more with anime, so... I don't know. No, I think it's it's the light that shines equally on all. Um, I would say the piss poorest category out of all them is the TV and film industry because they have been doing so bad with some of these movies and series lately. So I would say they could do better. Not that it needs to be a bigger life show, right. but they need to improve and do better because the anime, comic, manga, all that is surpassing. Music is surpassing the TV and film industry. And they could and they can do better. There's so much potential with these shows you can release or movies. All we see now is not revamps and spinoffs, and that's that's getting tired. No, I feel that. I feel that. Hmm. And and I and I don't want to ask this, but there's a rumor out there mm-hmm. that you and me like to argue, and that we don't get along. How would you address those rumors if somebody approached you and said, "Why do you keep arguing with Ryan so much on these live streams?" What you say, Luigi? My manager said <laughs> he's warning. He's he's saying answering this question can be risky. Correctly, <laughs> and I'm going to answer it. I'm going to answer it. My manager just informed me to be careful when answering this question. I would say that me and you have the same, some very similar goals, but it's the way we execute to get to those goals that's very different. That causes a difference mm-hmm. of opinion, and I will also say that we help each other see blind spots that we don't see since we're both, you know, in our own little world and not in our own little bubble. And I I won't say it's arguments. I call it word sparring. You know, I won't say it's an argument. Word you know, it's, sparring. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's kind of fun. It'd be fun sometimes, you know, to rough your feathers and make you, you know, get all red in the face. You know, it's fun sometimes. You know, so I want to say it's, it's all love and that it's no hate. And say, it's not like fuck Ryan and all that. It's like, you know, I'm going to get on this live stream and I'm going to say something until you get Ryan riled up, but not in a bad way. Just so I can be like, yeah. yeah. That's how I'm going to clip the ad, though, for this video. I'm going to be oh, like, wow. why do you are, like to argue with Ryan? Fuck Ryan. <laughs> 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 in the, in the That'd be so That's crazy. Be <laughs> <laughs> That'd I'm be right. so crazy. Hey. If I'm the one editing this, that's going to be the ad right there. That's why I hope Foop or Antoine, no, not even him, because he'll do some shit like that. I'm going to say Foop is the only one that might do right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's all love. You know, it's all love. We just got, we just grew up different. We're different black men. We're, di- we're different. We're, we, we are both a different archetype of a black man. So that's all that is. And it's going to be mm-hmm. disagreements and, you know, compromises. With stuff like that, I feel that, and be and knowing that, like, we start to expand with different guests, and you tend to get along with the guests better than you get along with me. Are, is there any particular guest? <laughs> the shade coming. I don't care. Is there any particular guest you would like to see on the mob in the future? Random guest, someone in the industry. It could be anybody. Who would you like to see? I would. Honestly, though, somebody that I would want to sit down on an episode of Hit Stop and have a conversation with. I don't know. I don't know why I want to say Kiki Palmer. Like, I don't know why I want to have a conversation with Kiki Palmer and, like, hmm. just, and just have, you know, like a little girl's talk and just chat it up with Kiki Palmer. Episode of Hit Stop. Ask her about, you know, her experience in the music industry and her take on it. And we, you know, just laugh and, you know, vibes. So Kiki Palmer would probably be one of the first ones. Um, we've had some of the other ones on. I don't know, um, like what's her name from Room Full of Blurs? And we got Dark Sage. Kira. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, I enjoyed her. So I would probably have her back. She was a, she was a vibe. Sage was nice too. I mean, I would have him back, but no. 
He's, that's your eyes a little bit. He gonna catch I mean, because he's part of the black male archetype that you fit in, so you know. <laughs> so you know, he, he cool people. It's all love, safe. So yeah, I would probably say my industry answer is Kiki Palmer. Uh, my like local answer would probably be to bring Kira back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Kira, you got to come and Kiki Palmer Kira, if you're that's watching. Name. Yeah. Hit us up. Hit us up yeah. if you're watching. Come on down, Miss Palmer, because I got some questions that you do. Look, I ain't mad at that. Funny enough, I like to see Meg on here because I think uh, we don't. Uh, yeah, I, uh, like, uh, I would I'll, love to see her in a space like this. If I was, if I was to get Nikki to come, would y'all sit on the uh, episode of His Stop with Nikki? If, so, I would be some, scared. In some word, I can word I convinced her to hop on a His Stop live stream. Y'all be scared. Well, you I'll be scared because because if she's if she's talking music, I don't feel like I would be as I'm not an astute learner of like the music industry or like the mm-hmm. history of rap and hip hop. I think she would. I think I'll piss her off. I don't think I'll do a good so job. So you ducking, so you ducking and running. You Look. ducking and running. Or, or oh, you're not oh, gonna oh. take this as a moment to like just suck up what you can learn though. You have an icon, that's, a legend in front of you, and you're gonna run and not join the live. I'm gonna talk about that so bad. No, that's what I'll do. I'll have to like sit in the background. Like I don't even know yeah. if I'll just have questions. Like I'll just like to listen to her. Like yo, like you've been in this industry for so long, you've accomplished so much. Like what do you? What what was it like for you? Like forget right. what See, you that's told a good everybody question else. That you can ask. Yeah, that's a nice question you can ask. And you know, then you probably can ask her about I, Drake and slide Drizzy in there. Like what is it like working with Drake? <laughs> Information. Oh, I'm a huge fan of Drake. You know, tell him to come to the pod. I feel like if you tell her you're a huge Drake fan, she gonna love that because she really adores Drake and Wayne. So I feel like you gonna get on her good side if you say that. Not better, you know, because I'm a I'm a barb through and through. But you come after me. Oh my lord! Being a Drake fan, yeah. We was at that concert. You was up the entire time. You start sweating. Blue, I was getting sweating. Up every song. <laughs> I want to go to leg two. I ain't gonna lie. I want to go to leg two, but you know, planning to move and stuff. And who I'm gonna have to catch up next time. But yeah, I did have fun at that concert. Yeah, I did. It was a time. A That's time not was bad. Had. I it was a time was had. I just go to music at that concert. <laughs> Man, so I do want to ask. I want to get go back to just a little personal part. Mm-hmm. So you work in public health, which yes. is a very astute industry. And I wanted to ask, what got you into that? Was Has that always been your career goal in life? Actually, no. Um, I used to want to be, well, I'm not going to say used to want to. I'm going to say, oh, excuse me, I kind of still want to be a pediatrician. But the medical mm-hmm. industry is so flawed and fucked up at this point. Like, it can, it's very l- lucrative. But like, I want to join. A, I want to be a part of the medical industry to actually help people. And like, medical industry, Western medicine today is not designed to actually help people. It's a business. Yeah. And I don't want to be a part of that. But I stumbled upon public health because I met with my advisor at Jackson State. I forgot his name before we graduated senior year, and I wasn't ready for medical school. I didn't take no MCAT. I wasn't prepared for that. I was. I'm not even set myself up for that. I knew a lot of people that was taking. The MCAT, which is the medical um, college admission, right. medical college admissions test, and I knew a lot of people that just wasn't making scores that they wanted and wasn't getting into the medical school. So that did kind of discourage me a little bit. I was like, "Damn, Gallon, you ain't been to no practice seminars, no trainings. Like, you not gonna make a score, a good score in this MCAT. Like, let's find something else." So I was talking to my advisor, and he had an MPH, which is Master of Public Health, hanging on his wall, and I asked him about it, and he told me about it. And Jackson State had a program, and I got in, but I had to take the GRE and stuff like that. And I actually like mm-hmm. public health. Public health, I think, is what I really wanted, where you can actually help people without it being like a big business. Because public health encompasses so many things, like social and behavioral. It covers policy, um, data collection, epidemiology, disease. It covers like all of that, like racism. All of that stuff falls on the public health. So. It's like a big umbrella, a big bucket of stuff that you can hop in and just go on different routes. So, it yeah, sounds I like think, it includes a realm of sociology. Is that yeah, or it does. It that does. So, okay. Yeah, some people do um, include sociology and social work as part of public health. Some people actually include medicine as part of public health. And honestly, in a, if you think about it in a certain framework, it does because public health. The overarching definition of public health is 
basically the health of the public, the health of the community, the environment, you know, people's right, right to health and, you know, everything that comes upon it. And if you think about that, people's right to have a healthy life, doctors are a part of that. So, but, you know, doctors and public, medical doctors and public health doctors argue back and forth about is it a part, is it not a part. But, yeah, I really enjoy working in public health. I feel like you can do the most good regardless of what route you take in public health, whether I want to be a policymaker and I'm up there fighting for affirmative action and Roe v. Wade, or if I want to do more of the social side and, you know, work, social work and gender studies or, right. you know, racism, or if I want to do the data collection side while I collect data on COVID and other diseases or disease prevention, going to the health department and educate people on how to stay safe during sex and stuff like that. So public health is very, you know, multifaceted. You can do a lot of stuff in that. And I really enjoy it. That's awesome. That's awesome. So like, what type of impact would you like to leave on the world as a member of the public health workforce? Like, what would you like to do in that realm? I actually, I want to break a lot of generational curses in the black community. A lot like sometimes we're our own worst enemy and sometimes we're so ignorant to a point to where it's detrimental because sometimes ignorance can be bliss sometimes, but I feel like in some areas of the black community, we're ignorant to a point to where it's detrimental. And I want to change that. That's why we've always been losing to in society compared to all other races, not to make this a racist racism conversation, but that's why the black community Mm -hmm. as a whole has been losing as compared to all the other ones, because we have knowledge gaps everywhere, financial knowledge gaps, Social knowledge gaps when it comes to, you know, treating your child towards LGBT or men treating a woman, those gender wars or stuff like that. We have, I already said financial denial. Mm -hmm. Political. Some people don't even, some people don't even understand the policy and the political climate and why you should vote for this person. And it starts at your local elected officials. Some black people don't even understand it. They can't even begin to fathom all of that. And I just want to reverse that. I want to start, you know, with the cheering, you know, because mm-hmm. the children on our future and just, you know, create like programs and stuff to educate them and teach them financial responsibility and, you know, social, um, good social behaviors, how to treat one another if someone is different from you and stuff like that. That's the impact I'm going to leave. I want to educate the black community so we can end a lot of these generational curses. So, we can have black millionaires and billionaires all up and down the Forbes list in the next, you know, 20 to 30 years. All right. You're going to see us from the Blair mop up on that list at some point. Yeah. Yeah. So like, do you feel like in any way, do you feel like you could utilize the blurred mob as a platform to impact the community? And if so, how? I could, but it would change the tone of the podcast and not a whole lot, but it would kind of change a little bit the direction in which we're going. Cause you know, we talk about entertainment industry, music, music, movies, anime, manga, comics, all that mm-hmm. good stuff. And that's kind of like, like a, like our secondary place, you know what I'm saying? So right. it's kind of like mixing work and pleasure. So even if I did want to use the blur mob to, make a difference as far as, you know, my career, I would probably want to create like a whole different segment that's not related to the things that we already talk about. Um, That's more like right. focused on like actual real time issues and those discussions and things like that. But I don't want to attach that to the blur rock because the blur, when I think of the blur rock, I think of like our happy place, our second place that we go to when we get off right. work or, you know, when we just want to hop on the camera and have fun and talk. So I don't think I would use the blur mob. Um, to make a difference as far as public health. Okay. Or maybe I just haven't thought of a way to do it to where it doesn't change the vibe and the tone of the blur mind. Because once we do derive from that and start having more conversations that are not about anime and music, it's just about the community as a whole, I think that's what people are going to focus on more and they'll stop focusing on the other stuff like our mob reviews and our, our episodes. And I don't want that to happen. I don't want them just to be focused on what we got to say about Kamala versus Trump or 
the state of the black community. Because even though those things are important, but it's also important to have that second place that you can go to where you're tired of thinking about those things. Maybe you can just leave the world. Right. Maybe I just want to talk about this movie and this TV series and just live in this this euphoric state for like an hour. And we need those things, which is also a part of public health. You know, having that second place to go to that's not work. I'll tell you, tie that together. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they teach us at Jackson State. Yeah, product of Jackson State University. (laughs) <laughs> what, was, what was the best thing to go to word our matriculation where we matriculated <laughs> <laughs> that used to go out first for year you're matriculating everybody bro oh my god I had to google what matriculation was I was like I would never use this word outside yeah, of college yeah I was like this is y'all ain't matriculated shit over here because <laughs> look but I do want to lighten it up a little bit for the fans who are watching we did get a little deep mm-hmm. um but before I get to this question, I want to make sure it's a good question. What are your top three video games or fran- franchises, rather? Mortal Kombat from one. Y'all, y'all already know I'm an OG MK fan. I'm an OG MK fan to the point to where I remember being a little jig, just getting beat by my older cousin and uncles and enjoying it just because I was a part of the vibes. I knew, I knew when it was my turn to get to control, I was going to hand it up the next round. But just the fact that I got it, it was actually able to play it and be a part of the vibes with the older guys. Like, that made me fall in love with MK. Secondly, I must probably say God of War. I recently, like a couple months ago, played the most recent two games. I played, um, I know one was, I can't remember the names. The most recent two God of Wars, I played them like back to back. Like, I finished one and did the other one. And I really enjoyed those. I never played the old ones when we were younger I always watched like my uncles and stuff playing I always thought it was cool but those were the type of games that they wouldn't let me play because if I got on that right. and fuck some shit up it would mess them up so <laughs> I just had to sit back and watch them play them type games um, but yeah God of War and number three I want to say Spider-Man Spider-Man has the the last I would say three four Spider-Man games have been really nice you know the mechanics the gameplay the storyline so I would say those three are my top three franchises no. Nice, nice. Yeah. Now, only because I'm familiar with Mortal Kombat a little bit more, I wanted to ask if you could sit down with Ed Boone, if I believe he's the gaming director behind mm-hmm. Mortal Kombat or the franchise in general, what would be your pitch for the next Mortal Kombat game if it came right after MK1? You know what's funny, though? If I got to sit down with Ed Boone, what I would tell Ed Boone is to hold off on the games for a second. Because what Ed Boone and the rest of them don't don't realize is that if done right, they have a gold mine when it comes to MK and making movies into TV shows. Anime, if they wanted to with MK, like that is a freaking, imagine doing a partnership with Crunchyroll making a Mortal Kombat anime on one of those other a studios. Really solid there. One, yeah. A really solid one. That would be nasty. Like, imagine, like, a, a series, like, an HBO Max series in Mortal Kombat mm-hmm. series that was really had, like, resources and stuff put into it. It had a nice storyline. Like, because the movie, the first, the most recent movie had potential. It wasn't the best. I was like, I see the potential in this, but I also see where, like, all the resources and effort was going to the games that was coming out. It was like, okay, we got this movie. We're going to do a little something with it. But I was like, y'all could have did so much wrong with this movie. And that's what I would tell you, boom, hold off on the games, because you got like 25,000 games. I still got three more to come back games on my PS5 right now. Hold off on exactly. that. Exactly. Then we got a new DLC coming out. When that DLC drops, hold off. Get into this this entertainment industry as far as the film, the TV. Get into that, because if y'all put y'all resources into that, y- y'all need one good movie, one good series and one biomass anime and y'all got it. I'm telling y'all, y'all got it. Y'all probably won't have to make another game again. Bro, now that I'm thinking about it, like a HBO series, like 10 yes. one hour episode. That really just up. get into <laughs> it. Yeah. That would be cold. A bomb-ass anime? Cold. Yeah, a bomb-ass anime that's action-packed and they really like get into it? Hell yeah. Yeah. That's what I think. That's what I think Ed Boone should do. They should hold off on the games for just a little fun. I would say hold off on the games for like I would say a ten year timeline. A ten year timeline to get y'all to produce one good movie, one good series, one good anime. And after ten years, if y'all want to circle back with a game, then y'all circle back with a game stemming off one of those three things that you I would credit. Most preferably the anime. If you create a ball mass anime. And that was a hit. 
the next game y'all make should be a continuation of that anime and just take it on through. That's what I'd like to see. I want to see them make more movies and TV shows. Because it's such a I don't know what They haven't done anything. They have. They don't have any really any TV shows for real. It's one series, MK series, but it's more of like an independent series. It's not backed by anything major. And the old two movies that released in the 90s, and they got the recent movie. They have nothing else as far as TV and film on MK. Oh, and the animated they movies. Got, the animated movies. Those are animated dope. movies, but yeah. those are pretty, those are solid, but a solid anime series, though? Yeah. I see the vibe you're going for. Yeah. 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 Uh, that should have been a conversation for the main pod. I like, I didn't even know, I didn't even think of an answer like that for that question, King. Yeah. Hmm. We probably could circle back on a, um, on a live stream episode to talk about that. But yeah, I would definitely like to see that. I would definitely yeah. like to see one of those creators that created like Solo Leveling or um, Demon Slayer. So really good quality like, fight scenes, yeah, really basically. Good quality like, fight scenes. You see them like, you get to see everybody's power set and their fatalities. Yeah. Their fatalities. That would be cold. And I wouldn't even be mad if I had to watch it in sub because if it's nice, I'm not even going to be, that's not going to be on my mind anyway. So yeah, that's what I would like to see. I would definitely tune in to that every Saturday, every Saturday morning. Man, Ed Boom, Ed Boom, Ch- chop it up with us. They chop make, it up with right, us. Right, and they make an anime like Rick and Morty got a fucking anime, and I tried to watch it's that. And listen, good. I tried to. Get, I'm good. still, I'm still on the first episode. Same. The first time I watched it, I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" I cut it off. The second time I watched it, I got a little further, and I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" And I cut it off, and I don't know if I'm gonna circle back because it's like, "What the fuck is going on?" I tried to watch it. And I'm a Rick and Morty fan. It wasn't hitting like yes, this. Yes, I'm a diehard Rick and Morty was, fan too. But I was like, "This is yeah." Just they could have just made another season. regular series, right? Yeah. I was just gonna say they could have just made another season. That yeah, but yeah, Ed Bo, you need to get at us. Just let us sit you down on a live stream and let, just let us pitch our ideas to you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Look. Give we'll give you some, we'll give some good ideas. Yeah, give them games a break. For we love the MK games. I love it, love it, love it. Let's give them a break. Let's give them a break. Some people, some even some of the fans are getting tired. Some of the fans on the Twitter arguing about what's the best MK. Game. Yeah. Why are we arguing about what's the best installment of MK? Because we have too many. Let's give it a break. Let's just give it a break. Yeah, I ain't mad at that. So I got one more question before I give you. Um, Time to go get you some rest and leave this interview. And it's a cliche one, but what mm. would you define? How would you define the term blurred? We are part of blurred mob. We talk about a nerdy culture. Where how would you define the term blurred and what it means to you? I would say a blurred is somebody that dabbles in their interests unapolo- unapolo- unapologetically. Ooh, I can't talk. Oh, it out, past it. It's I okay, Pat. Take your time, oh. Pat. It's okay, Pat. That's <laughs> Not very demure at all. <laughs> not very demure. Not very mindful. Not very <laughs> articulate. Like <laughs> very silly. Very silly. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like a blurb is someone that like dives in their interests unapolog- unapologetically. Look at me still trying to say this damn word. I'm gonna get it unapologetically. That still ain't get it. But somebody who does, yeah, who just dives into their interests that doesn't the interests that are not detrimental to others or society because some people got some some weird interests if you dive into mm-hmm. your interests you know that are not like gaming music anime manga comic tv series even books i got hella books over here that i read i forgot about that category i got hella books my favorite book series is Percy jackson by the way yeah. Right for the right for book number seven. Yeah, but like if you just dive into any of those things and you just love it or all of them, then you're a blur. You're a blur. But well, it is black nerd. So yeah, you also have to be black. <laughs> to be a not if you said not everybody's blurred. Y'all yeah, can be not, not, all y'all can be no blur, but you know, <laughs> y'all can be a nerd, our cousin, our cousin. Yeah. <laughs> cousin, we love you, yeah. cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Well, well, King, we're coming up on the time box. I want to okay. let you know that I thoroughly enjoyed talking to you within this interview. Um, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And to the fans, make sure if y'all are watching this on YouTube, like, subscribe, turn those bell notifications for the channel. Make sure you check out our social medias; they're all in the description. Follow the link trees: Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, slash X Threads. We're all over the world. 
Check out those affiliate links. Support the mob. We have a Kofi link so that you can send random donations. We also have an Entertainment Earth affiliate link so that we can get a portion of the proceeds for anything you purchase. Make sure to check us out. And this is the Blurred Mob signing out. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, wait. Hold on, wait. Because you told these people at the beginning that you didn't know all of that. And for you to come I didn't know it all. I threw it together. They just called they be calling out the social media name. I don't. I don't know all our social media is by heart. I don't. Ah, that's so. I'm sitting here thinking like he just told people he didn't know all this stuff. He just wants to speak now. That's no, crazy. Had, that came from the dome. I got my. I got my um media clearance. What you called it when you talk to, you. Uh, in public media training? I got that too. Media I training. You know what I'm saying? I feel I, you. I feel it together. You. <laughs> I feel you. I did, it. I did enjoy this. You were a great interviewer. And yeah, now we can sign it out. I just had to put that two cents in there because that was crazy to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the blurred mob finding out. Peace. It's hmm. just so it's just something. One, I have to be a firebender. Two, I want blue fire. I want mm. it. Mm-hmm. I want the blue fire. <laughs> I want the um lightning bending. I want it. So you want to be on your Azula game.